Hey everybody, so <clears throat> we're going to do notes on strobe photos, also known as motion diagrams. Uh, we're going to use three methods of describing motion. First, right now we're doing a picture. Uh, in a couple weeks we'll do a graph um, with X and Y axis to describe motion. And then we will eventually get to uh, equations. Uh, that we can calculate with, all right? So today is a picture. It's about motion diagrams or strobe photos. You could call them either, all right? So you've looked at them with a demo with uh, rubber stoppers. Now we're going to I'm going to show you something called the strobe photo here on my computer. Okay, so that is a strobe photo. How do they make that picture? Well, if you take a camera in a dark room and uh, you keep the, uh, oh, you photo people would know better than me the exact name, but keep the lens open the whole time. Don't let it flash. Um, just keep it open the whole time, capturing light. But there's no light to be captured because it's a dark room. So it's not really capturing anything even though the camera is watching. But, if you bounce this ball across, it wouldn't see the ball because the room is dark, even though the lens is open, capturing, uh, trying to capture an image. But what you could do is you could take a strobe light while the ball is bouncing, and every time the strobe light flashes, uh, the camera will see a picture of the ball. So you could set the strobe light to flash every tenth of a second. So every second you'd get ten pictures of the ball there in the camera. When you print the picture, it would look like this, which, uh, looks like what we did with the rubber stoppers the other day. So you could see uh, where the ball is more spaced apart is where the ball is going faster, okay? Lower to the ground, you could see that the ball speeds up <clears throat> when it goes downward. So lower to the ground, where it's faster, there's more space between each picture of the ball. But as it slows down towards the top, there's very little space between the pictures of the ball because the ball is traveling slow at the top while it's bouncing there. Okay, so that's why we call it strobe photos. Um, you can look up more into photography if you'd like those. Um, but let's get started with the notes now. This stuff you need to copy down. Now, you don't need to copy down the picture of the ball unless you really want to. Okay, so strobe photos are motion diagrams. So we're gonna do, um, we're gonna draw strobe photos of a car that's moving from the left to the right and the car does five different motions so you need to make a table with two columns and five rows and uh, on the left side will be the beginning of the motion of the car and the right side will be the end of the motion of the car okay but I don't really want to draw a car every time just like that stroke photo had a picture of a basketball every time I don't really want to uh, draw that because it takes more t it just takes a long time. So I'm gonna draw dots um, Instead of uh, cars every time. Okay So what would slow constant velocity look like? <clears throat> well slow means that the dots are close together like this But you're gonna see that I'm also trying to make those dots equally spaced because they are moving at a constant speed, which means the space between each dot is the same. A medium constant velocity would have a higher speed. So each dot would get more spacing, but there would still be equal spaces between each dot. Now a fast constant velocity would still have equal spacing between each dot. But the spacing would be larger because the speed is greater and more distance is covered when it goes faster. Speeding up means the car would start slow. So it would start with the dots close together and progressively, they would get further apart as time goes on. So it starts with little spacing and ends with a lot of spacing, indicating a high speed at the end. Slowing down means you would start off with a higher speed or a great amount of spacing. 
And then, over time, the spacing will get less and less, indicating a lower speed as time goes on. So high speed on the left side, large spacing, smaller spacing on the right side, where it's going slower, okay? So these are your five examples you need to know, and when we do problems, we might combine the two. Uh, we might have a car going at a fast constant speed, and then part two would be like slowing down, something like that, all right? Those could be combined together. All right, so there's your descriptions. Now copy this down. I'll give you a second to copy it, and then I'll explain it. All right, so you could unpause now, and uh, oh, we're going to be talking about acceleration, this word acceleration. Acceleration means a change in velocity. Most of the time when you think of acceleration, you think about something like this. Like if the light is red and then it turns green, the cars at that light will accelerate because they are speeding up. They press on the gas to accelerate, all right? And yes, speeding up is a kind of acceleration because it is a change in velocity. Whatever's on the speedometer is changing. Speeding up counts as a change. But there are really two types of acceleration. Speeding up is one, and that you know already. But today, what I really want you to know is that slowing down is also a kind of acceleration. Because slowing down is another kind of change in velocity. It's just a negative change. Speeding up is where what's on the speedometer increases. It is a positive change. Slowing down is when what is on the speedometer decreases. It is a negative change, but it is still a change. And you have to know that in physics, slowing down is acceleration too, not just speeding up, okay? So if you were to calculate acceleration, if, you're, if, the car, if your car speeds up, if you were to calculate A, for acceleration, what is it? You would get a positive number when a car speeds up when you calculate it. But you would, if a car is slowing down and you go to calculate acceleration, you would get a negative number when you calculate it. That's why we call it negative acceleration. So I want you to go back real quick to your diagrams you drew and label speeding up positive A and label slowing down as negative A somewhere. Okay. Oh, I think I forgot to write also, you should write this down. Equal spacing means constant velocity. And sometimes I write CV for constant velocity, just for short. <clears throat> okay. So we covered positive A, slowing down is negative A, write those down. One more sheet of notes here. I have a question for you. Copy down this question. What is acceleration equal to when the object travels with a constant velocity? Well, we said if you're speeding up, acceleration would be equal to some positive number. If you're slowing down, you do also have an acceleration, but the acceleration would equal some negative number. That's still an acceleration. but. What if you're not speeding up or slowing down? What if your speed stays steady? We call that constant velocity. What would A be equal to? Would it be equal to a positive number? Like when you're speeding up? No, because that means your speed is getting greater. Would it be equal to a negative number like when you're slowing down? No, because that means your speed would be getting less. But when you're going at a constant velocity, the acceleration is equal to zero because there is no acceleration. Acceleration means change. And there is no change when you stay at a constant or a steady speed. So you would write A equals zero every time you see a constant velocity. Write that in. Do it right now on your chart here. A equals zero right there when there's a constant velocity even if you're going faster, but if your speed stays steady, as long as there's no increase or decrease in the speed, A stays, A is zero and the speed stays the same. Even if you're going 200 miles an hour in your car, as long as you stay at that same speed, 
you do not have an acceleration. You could go as fast as you want, but if your speed stays steady, A equals zero.